Thank you. And what I'm going to uh, try to accomplish in, in my talk is really give a broad overview of our modus operandi now <clears throat> at Boston Children's Hospital when, when faced with a child uh, with very complex heart disease. But I want to start off really with the definition of the borderline left heart because I think this varies from uh, institution to institution and, uh, and uh, surgeon to surgeon, and rightfully so. Really, this is what we're getting at. You've got a patient who has relatively normal left-sided structures and has a long-term probability of uh, biventricular circulation that's closer to 100%, we're going to have no hesitation with going with a biventricular repair up front. Now, biventricular repair is really a fancy term for fixing whatever lesion or lesions appears to be abnormal, whether it's a coarctation repair or an aortic valve or mitral valve repair. On the other hand, you have a child who absolutely has no chance of survival with the biventricular circulation, and we call that, therefore, a single ventricle uh, patient, and we, we uh, uh, assume that, that this patient needs to have a single ventricle palliation for the rest of their life. In between, however, are really a large cadre of patients who uh, have a potential for a biventricular circulation, uh, but are really high risk uh, to some degree, depending upon the institution and the surgeon uh, and, the, and the, the care system, uh, to achieve that goal of a good long-term survival. And they may be considered borderline for multiple reasons. It could be hypoplasia of the left ventricle, which is what we're most focused on, or the aortic valve, mitral valve disease. It might be a patient with mitr a neonatal mitral regurgitation. I was speaking to one of uh, our uh, um, uh, audience uh, earlier today who said that, you know, uh, really when I'm faced with a patient with uh, a neonatal mitral regurgitation, I don't want to take a biventricular approach. I'd rather go down a single ventricle pathway. Reasonable if, if, if you look at the long-term probability of success and you say that that's just not right in my hands. But it could be because of pathways, straddling valves, et cetera. Unfortunately, our approach to these patients has classically been just two-pronged. We've got a dichot we've got a decision. We've got a fork in the road here. Are we going to go down a single ventricle palliative route, which definitely means that we're going to head towards the Fontan circulation, or do we go down a pi primary biventricular repair and, and have to ask the questions of, is this, uh, is this child really ready uh, for a primary biventricular repair? Are there tools to assist us uh, with this uh, decision making there? That's been a good part of the past 20 years, uh, trying to decide who can be primary biventricular repair versus not. But here's the catch. We're trying to use tools that will tell us who will succeed with a one-shot biventricular repair. And the problem with these tools is that they're not reliable, number one. They're not reliable from institution to institution because there's clearly going to be variability in, in, in the outcomes between uh, uh, institutions. And number three, it doesn't really harness the full potential of a child's ventricle. If you suddenly load a left ventricle that's not quite ready uh, to handle, of course it's going to fail. But does that mean that it could not achieve that? So this is where the idea of the staged left ventricular recruitment came in. We said, well, we don't like being put between a rock and a hard place, so why don't we try to pull ourselves from that situation out? Let's try to do this gradually over time. Let's try to see if we can get the left ventricle to contribute to the circulation in the most successful way possible. So the idea is you take the relatively reproducible uh, outcome of a single ventricle palliation up front. You take the time to maneuver, uh, to, uh, to, uh, maneuver uh, the, the uh, valve and uh, ventricular structures to load the left heart. And eventually, if you get ventricular growth, as Dr. Powell mentioned in his, uh, in his talk, then you can convert the child to a biventricular circulation. If not, then you continue down a single ventricle pathway. The, the, the idea here is to really keep your options open. And to think of a single ventricle palliation as not being terminal single ventricle palliation, but in fact an opportunity to, to take the time to step back and to recruit the ventricle. So if you're faced with a patient that you feel is high risk, and this may differ from place to place, palliate first, whether it would be with a stage one, a PA band, in some cases a hybrid, but don't give up necessarily on the left heart. Come back and through another procedure, perform surgical rehabilitation of the valves, the left ventricle, 
EFE resection and try to see if you can recruit uh, the left heart and perform this two-ventricular, biventricular conversion more electively. So distinguishing it from a, bi a primary biventricular repair and a stage recruitment followed by a biventricular conversion. Now the downside is more surgical procedures. And that's one of the things that has to be considered and weighed against uh, uh, single ventricle palliation. But in our hands, now as surgical techniques have improved, we're not afraid of uh, multiple surgical uh, procedures anymore. Our, our, um, our uh, survival from a surgical procedure has improved. But this really gives you more time to assess the risk factors for both approaches and make a more clarified decision as you, as you commit this child to a long-term circulation. So this is uh, kind of how this might look. This is a uh, patient uh, with uh, hypoplastic left heart syndrome who's had aortic heart arch um, uh, hypoplasia and coarctation and borderline uh, left heart structures, so we term as the borderline LV. And uh, we performed uh, a um, postnatal aortic uh, valve balloon dilation followed by a neonatal palliation with a stage one and, uh, and uh, subsequently um, performed some uh, work on the aortic and mitral valves with the goal of really creating a stable single ventricle circulation. And then at four to six months of age, we bring this child back for a bidirectional glen and a left heart rehabilitation consisting of more work on the aortic and mitral valves, EFE resection, and fenestrated closure of the atrial septal defect. One uh, uh, point that was brought up in Dr. Powell's talk is addition of additional blood flow to the, uh, to the uh, left uh, ventricle by either leaving a RV to PA conduit in place or adding a shunt. And if you do that, I would, uh, uh, I would suggest that you actually separate the uh, shunted side of the circulation from the glen to avoid uh, reversal of flow in the, uh, in the glen. So the way we do that now is either by placing a band between the shunt and the glen or a membrane with the fenestration. And that allows uh, the glen pressures not to, uh, not to be uh, too high if you have a shunt in close proximity. But note you that the patient still has a single ventricle circulation, so you haven't burnt any bridges uh, for, for, the sing, uh, for the single ventricle repair if the left heart uh, does not have a chance to grow. In patients with an with a unbalanced AV canal defect, uh, you can leave the ventricular septal defect open and simply fenestrate the atrial septum, and that actually is uh, good for the AV valve that's leaking most commonly in the single ventricle circulation anyway because it helps stabilize the central portion of the leaflet. So we found that, that there are multiple benefits to taking this approach, even if you don't end up going down a biventricular circulation. So finally, uh, we give it time. Six months to uh, uh, two years uh, of age, we're observing these patients through echocardiogram. If there are any uh, uh, changes to the circulation, particularly if the transeptal gradient increases or if the patient starts to, to develop, uh, any uh, concerns for SVC syndrome, we bring them back uh, and perform a catheterization to uh, either dilate or uh, stent uh, the uh, atrial septum or manipulate uh, the shunt. At two to four years of age is when we perform the assessment that Dr. Powell uh, mentioned earlier with an MRI, catheterization, and echocardiogram and, and look for uh, uh, predictors of a successful biventricular circulation. I won't go into a lot of the details uh, since that was uh, covered in uh, Dr. Powell's talk, but we, uh, we review all of the data and make a decision uh, regarding uh, biventricular conversion uh, versus uh, um, uh, heading to a Fontan. And uh, as you saw earlier, there, uh, there's clear evidence that the left ventricle can grow, and I, th I think intuitively we all feel that children uh, do have this potential uh, for growth, whether this growth involves uh, um, recruitment of new myocytes or it's, it's, it's simply uh, dilation of the ventricle is still uh, unclear. But what is clear is that you have to restrict the atrial septal defect 
you have to push blood flow into that left ventricle in order for it to grow. If you don't, we found that, uh, that, the, that the ventricle does not grow. This slide here shows uh, patients uh, who have had staged left ventricular recruitment either with or without atrial septal defect restriction. And the top curve uh, are the patients who've had ASD re restriction compared to the patients on the lower uh, um, uh, curve who had an ASD that was left unrestrictive at the time of recruitment. So you have to restrict the atrial septal defect. So this is uh, our uh, experience at latest uh, check. Uh, we've attempted a staged left ventricular recruitment in 120 uh, patients. And this includes uh, hypoplastic left heart syndrome. It includes unbalanced AV canal, double outlet right ventricle with uh, unbalanced canal, and, um, and a, a whole cadre of, of patients. Biventricular conversion was uh, performed in uh, uh, 51 uh, patients. Thank you for that reminder. Uh, and um, and uh, 69 patients are currently in a single ventricle uh, palliation state. So that means that uh, some of them are still awaiting uh, potential for uh, either biventricular conversion uh, versus heading down uh, the Fontan uh, pathway. Um, this slide is simply to show that uh, there, there have been patients who uh, have either um, uh, died, had a transplant, or uh, had their uh, circulation taken down. It's 11 out of the, the 51. And I think the important learning point from this was that the patients with uh, the hypoplastic left heart complex syndrome variants, that is patients with EFE, uh, ha are the ones who tend to do uh, worse than the unbalanced canal, the patients who do not have EFE. and, and uh, this is really uh, starting to factor into our approach uh, for selecting patients for the biventricular uh, conversion. And I think one of the, one of the issues is really their preoperative uh, left ventricular end diastolic pressures tend to be higher. Uh, and so we're, we're trying to use this data to modify our uh, selection techniques and, and uh, we're, we're um, integrating on a regular basis the, the new data that comes through to, to help optimize our outcomes. So in, in summary, um, the tools to predict success of a boom, two ventricle repair right now, um, I think are poor. And I think they underestimate the true biventricular potential of a child. I think uh, a, a high risk primary biventricular repair is probably worse than a single ventricle. So I wouldn't advocate for that, but buy some time. Initial single ventricle palliation, don't commit necessarily to that but use that as an opportunity to recruit the left ventricle. Just remember that uh, atrial septal defect restriction and forcing more flow into the left ventricle uh, is a critical portion of the, of the recruitment strategy. But in patients who, who demonstrate uh, growth of that left ventricle, uh, we've had uh, success with uh, converting to a biventricular circulation. And patients with the EFE uh, have worse outcomes compared to uh, the AV canal or other uh, types of patients. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, we'll be happy to take some questions. Please help us improve the content by providing us with some feedback.